Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another uh, Xiaomi M365 uh, 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 video. Today we are going to do some servicing and uh, I had a, let's call it a big issue with it. After going uh, very fast over some uh, series of uh, bumps, the um, controller on the handlebar uh, gave me a few beeps and uh, after that it has completely shut down and uh, left me without any kind of power so i wasn't able to uh, still uh, use my bike after that so now i'm going to try to investigate the problem i already guessed uh, what the issue is but i'm going to show you how to make some uh, your own diagnostics on uh, it and uh, see where uh, the problem uh, can be found and how to fix it which is more important so as you can see this is the battery uh, inside you can see uh, the lithium ion cells this is here the discharge plug this is the main plug that uh, takes the power from the battery and takes it into the controller and the other wires here are uh, for the battery management system they are a kind of connection between the battery and the controller it tells the capacity and the status of the battery so we are not going to mess with all of that I'm just going to disconnect the discharge plug here and I'm going to check to see uh, if uh, the battery still supplies power to the controller and uh, I'm going to do that by using a multimeter I'm going to set the meter to uh, 200 volts because it has 20 and 200 volts uh, the battery range is uh, somewhere uh, between uh, 32 volts and uh, 42 volts it has a nominal voltage of 36 volts but depending on its uh, state of charge it will vary so 200 volts it's over 200 and it's safe so I'm going to use uh, this and plug it into the main connector of the battery and there you go it only has a few volts nowhere near uh, the indicated voltage which is interesting is the fact that uh, in open voltage situation it goes up to 20 volts which can be kind of tricky but if I use my finger don't do this because you can get an electric shock as this can have 42 volts but I'm going to do it anyway if I make a short circuit with my finger I'm drawing power from the battery and the voltage drops to 3 volts which means that actually the battery is not outputting uh, the voltage because uh, the battery is uh, rather smart and uh, it's uh, rather uh, well made there are only a few issues that can uh, happen uh, to it and um, uh, disable it from working uh, knowing the fact that I was going very fast over some bumps uh, that may indicate some physical uh, uh, defect that uh, has appeared uh, or uh, maybe uh, something has burnt out but I was not uh, doing crazy stuff I was just uh, driving normally over the bumpy roads so uh, my guess is that uh, I have a contact issue somewhere you may know that this battery may also have a problem with the uh, so-called fuse that burns out so I'm going to investigate to see if it's that fuse or if it's something else the first thing I will uh, check is to see if all the uh, tabs here metal tabs that are also underneath uh, this uh, label here are still connected to the circuit board uh, that is because uh, this battery is made up of uh, a lot of cells these cells are connected between them and form uh, smaller packs and the smaller packs gets all connected to a circuit board that goes around the battery so all the cells get connected together uh, because uh, uh, mechanical shocks sometimes can uh, um, take uh, the connection off I'm going to check them and I'm going to use uh, the rounded part of this key and I'm going to push on these tabs to see if there is any kind of movement and as you can see these are rather solid there's no movement and I'm going to check 
all of them and there it goes this one it's moving it's kind of soft so when I press it it goes in so if I keep it pressed it stays there so definitely I have an issue here while the others are uh, solid I'm now going to use a cutter and uh, gently make an incision in the plastic around somewhere here and I don't want to make any kind of short circuit so I need to have a lot of attention where I'm cutting and what I'm cutting so I'm going to avoid the circuit board and other things so I'm just going to kind of just rip the plastic around that connection which I believe it's damaged and there it goes let me zoom in I hope that now you will be able to see look at this tab here it's completely separated from the battery so this is not making any kind of connection and um, this probably is my single problem currently with this battery pack so I'm going to remove some of the excess plastic around and I'm going to prepare my soldering iron to uh, solder it directly onto the circuit board when you are soldering around the uh, printed uh, circuit boards and lithium ion cells it's very important to do that job very fast and uh, not overheat the whole area so it's recommended to use a very powerful soldering iron uh, do the job quickly and then stop and let it cool and for that I'm going to use a, a gas powered uh, um, soldering iron because this has a lot more uh, heat capacity than uh, electric ones so I'm going to try to force some solder between the, the pad and the circuit board while I'll heat the uh, metal plate here and the solder will go between the two of them and it's starting to happen. So I'm going to put enough of it. and it will go underneath alright and now I'm going to keep it pressed and I'm going to use something else to hold it in position while I remove my soldering iron let it cool and it's now soldered into position now I should get a voltage reading hopefully if not maybe we have to reactivate the cell so if I connect the mult multimeter no I don't get any kind of voltage reading so I'm going just to connect the uh, connector back to the control board and I'm going to use the charger cable and I'm going to connect it and put it on charge and nothing happens but I get a red LED like the battery is charging which previously uh, was green and the battery was not charging and if I power it on from the power button look at that it's working and I have a red LED here so the battery is back alive it has been reactivated and definitely if I take it out of uh, the jack and measure it I'm going to have around uh, 40 volts uh, which would mean that the battery is now working again I'm not going to disconnect it again because probably uh, the smart board will uh, disable it again so it's now working and charging so let's see what the mobile application says about it well, let's connect connect device now and it has connected successfully current battery level it's 
let's see here battery information battery is charging and battery cell voltage we have a reading so it's the battery is almost full uh, my problem has happened right after I have finished charging the battery I have uh, went with the scooter outside I had to do a quick trip and uh, when I have gone through those pumps it has uh, stopped working so the problem was definitely from here and uh, probably uh, some of the other uh, tabs here uh, in uh, uh, more you see from now on will uh, have the same situation but it's okay because it's very easy you just take the cap off you just cut the plastic here do a bit of soldering and that's done uh, it will last for a much longer period of time this is pot welded uh, now it's being soldered uh, it will have a longer longevity if we can uh, say that way so all that uh, remains now is to put some uh, duct tape here to keep uh, this uh, plastic on this provides some uh, uh, waterproof insulation because this is from one single piece and it's glued with silicone in uh, both ends so the battery is kind of waterproof uh, by cutting this I have voided its warranty and also destroyed the waterproofing so I'm going to do my best to try to cover this uh, as best I can to try to keep it from getting wet I don't usually use my scooter uh, when it's raining outside but maybe you will uh, go with it through a puddle and uh, water may ingress inside so it's better to be safe than uh, sorry so I'm going to tape this put the cap back and we are back in business